Now, Marx himself points out what these facts uh, imply that he's uh, referring to. They imply that the object that labor produces, its own product, confronts it as an alien thing, a power independent of the producer. And although, generally speaking, one can speak about the activity of laboring as involving a kind of objectification, where the activity, in a sense, realizes itself in a product. Now, you might ask, in what sense it is objectified? Uh, what's one way of thinking about an objectification of the activity? And this is a claim that Marx will make, and at times he will stress this notion of objectification as if in, as if in some respect the individual can confront himself and his own activity in the world he produces or the domain of objects he produces. In what respect is, can that be true? <coughs> now, you produce something, you alter something, you're working upon materials, unless you're dealing with your own body as a material, as in some kind of performance. Labor can take that form. In terms of service, industries, and the like. Um, but what are you doing to the object that could be regarded as in any way an objectification of, this, of the laboring individual? In some respect, you could say you're giving it form. You can think of this as an exercise of technique. You impose a form upon the material, giving it a new form it didn't have before. Now, the form is something that, in a way, you had to uh, imagine or represent to yourself antecedent to the act of labor, and then you impose it upon the material. Well, in that regard, you could say, fine, the form has been objectified in the product. But have you been objectified in the product? Can the product of labor really be an objectification of the individual? As Marx seems to suggest here, is that really possible? Is it really possible to be conscious of oneself in a product one produces? Which is something at times he will maintain. As if, in some respect, that ability to be conscious of oneself in what one produces as being something that is, in, in certain respects, undermined by the particular facts of the contemporary economic situation, where the objectification or actualization of the active individual ends up taking a form where the individual cannot see themselves or recognize themselves. And they can't recognize themselves in the object because the object confronts the laborer as something alien, as something from which the laborer is, is estranged. Now, to some degree, this whole talk of alien and, and, and estrangement sometimes rests upon this notion of objectification as if the act of producing could be something in terms of which individuals could be conscious of themselves in the product. But remember, the product does not contain their activity. At best, it contains a new form. The product is, is, is a service that might be said to have the activity, but are you just that activity? Can one really say that you as an individual are really adequately exhibited in any such so-called objectification? Well, keep these questions in mind as we proceed. Yeah. Um, I guess I just kind of wanted to ask uh, another question about yeah. this. What does it really mean to be aware of oneself in the product of your activity? Yeah. Like, can you give an example of that? I'm not really sure that. It, well, again, I, I mean, Marx that. points to this, and in doing so, by the way, he's. You have to keep in mind, uh, not that at this point it's going to help you much, that this entire work the 1844 manuscripts, consists of notations Marx makes while he's reading certain sections of Hegel's Phenomenology and Spirit. In particular, a section that many have been attracted to, particularly since Marx focused his attention on it, uh, a section sometimes called the master-slave relationship, um, where Hegel, by, in the Phenomenology, we'll talk about this a little bit later, um, is not concerned in the phenomenology with making any systematic claims about anything, let alone the nature of labor or the nature of modern society or anything else. He's rather trying to present an internal critique of 
an epistemological position that is embraced by almost all modern philosophy, and which he wants to call into question. And to call into question by showing its untenability from within, by showing how it operates on its own terms, it cannot sustain its claims. And so we have a variety of different configurations of this type of knowing, and I'll, I'll say more about it later. Uh, one of which involves a certain kind of uh, sort of epistemological um, engagement where individuals are trying to understand the object they confront as themselves. And this is going to involve different configurations that involve relationships between other individuals as well. But he's not making systematic claims. Rather, the claims being made are being made by the shape of knowing that is here being investigated in terms of a kind of internal critique, women critique. In any event, Marx here is commenting upon that work, um, even, even though at times you may remember that he, he, he'll point out that admittedly Hegel himself wants to speak about the work as not having any positive significance, but only a kind of critical negative significance. He nevertheless wants to say, well, it, it, it in effect shows something about Hegel's positive views, the false positivity that he's embroiled in in his, in his general works. Yeah. Just as a follow-up to this question, couldn't you say that it's a um, object objectification of the labor insofar as this process precludes the producer from um, imprinting his or her footprint upon the product himself and becoming this sort of automated function? Well, here you want to ask yourself, what, what does it mean for the object that you produce to be an objectification of the individual? Now, note, we can think of it as a technical operation where the individual acts in an exercise of technique imposing new form upon material, a form that has been represented by the individual. It's not the form of the individual. We're not talking about reproduction, right? Where in reproduction, you know, you produce, in a sense, another individual of the same species and you affirm your species being. And in doing so, you don't have to, to know the nature of the other individual. Uh, this can be done by animals who don't have to preconceive or conceive anything, just as you can do it without having to uh, intend whatever is, is going on. Right? You simply have to have, in a sense, the species being that is going to be uh, exhibited in your offspring. Uh, but if we're talking about technique and exercise of technique, well, okay, there's the form that's embodied. It's not you that's embodied. Now, there's another way in which something about you is embodied, and that's ownership. And again, again, you want to ask yourself, what is embodied or objectified in a factor that you are recognized to own? And note that obviously that aspect of ownership does not depend in any determinate way or any necessary way upon you having any relationship to the manufacturer of the item. Right? You can manufacture it without owning it. You can own it without having manufactured it. But whether you own it or not, if you own it, what is being objectified through your ownership? Yeah. Your labor. Your not your labor, because the labor has no connection to the ownership. And that's specifically the case here, on both sides. Who owns it is not who performed the labor that produced it, and who produced it, the labor that produced it is not the owner. But the owner of anything in being recognized as an owner has what recognized to be objectified in that item? Their will. Their will is an owner. It belongs to them. And note, that's a very abstract kind of personification. It's a personification of being an owner. And to be an owner requires simply that your will be recognized in some external factor. And that does not depend upon any other feature concerning yourself. You don't have to need the item. You don't have to have had any connection to the history of its, of its genesis. Uh, it's just a question of your will being embodied here. Well, in any event, here, the facts of the modern economic situation is that what is produced is produced by individuals who confront what they produce as something that is alien, something from which they are estranged, something that, if it in any way be spoken of as an objectification of their activity, 
is something in which they are not in a position to recognize themselves. Now, 